I'm from Warchild, and I'm going to speak about how we gather and use and represent um, children in our campaigning, in our in-country campaigning, in our campaigning in the UK, and also in a little bit in our fundraising. Um, Warchild is a child rights charity. We work in war zones. We're currently working in Central African Republic, Democratic Republic of Congo, um, Uganda, around Syria, so in Jordan, um, in Iraq, and in Afghanistan. So, and we're working with children in those countries and we're providing child protection and education and livelihoods programs. Um, the, so today I'm going to talk in two sort of parts. One about sort of the theory, sort of how, what we say we're going to do, and then sort of the practice, more like what we're actually doing and what that looks like. Um, and children's stories are really important to our work. Um, we need them to mobilise people, we need them to generate awareness, we need them to fundraise, um, we need them to change behaviours, to change policies. So we have to use children's stories. Um, this year, yeah, 2015, this year we've done our five-year strategic review and this is one of our core pillars of that strategic review, sort of underpinning that children's stories um, and their voices are vital to what we do. Um, what we say we're going to do is essentially best interests of the child, always show them with dignity. Um, we do this, uh, what, why we do this um, is because we think and we know that these children have been through incredible hardships. Um, they're really strong, they're really resilient. Um, and we just want to provide a platform where they can share their stories. Um, we don't want to show them as vulnerable. We don't want to show them as victims. We think that portrays a very negative stereotype that's not helpful for them, for their communities, or their families. Um, it's a stereotype that has been portrayed a lot um, and sort of shows these communities as dependent as, as, as victims, but also um, in need of our intervention and our help, actually having no resources or no ability to do anything for themselves. Um, so that's why we do it. Um, in terms of, we, we have a child protection policy, so it's a piece of paper that we follow. Um, and we say that children have rights and we want to promote those. Um, we listen to their stories in as much or as little detail as they want to share. We don't push them. Whatever they want to share is fine. We tell them where and how those stories are going to be used, those stories, those pictures, those videos. Um, and so we explain them. And we ask them for permission. Are you happy for us to use this in this way? Um, if we can't get permission, um, we'll ask a parent or guardian, or we don't use the story or the picture. And I mean, that makes our work would be much easier if we just said, fine, we'll use whatever we can find. But because of these underpinning values, um, it does make our work a little bit more difficult. But we think that has a beneficial impact on the children, their communities. Um, and again, our words and images um, of the children don't show them as vulnerable. They show them with dignity in the best interests um, and obviously we're working in some very challenging situations and protection of identity is very important um, for many reasons. All our journalists that go out to the field, all our visitors have to sign up to our child protection policy. Um, and we ask them that if they're telling stories, um, this is um, a code of part of the code of conduct, we ask them to sort of um, use those values, um, not to criminalise the children, don't sensationalise their lives, don't portray them as victims, um, or and don't portray them as helpless or powerless. They have been through a lot. They are quite resilient. Um, conflict is changing a lot. 
um, children these days in conflict situations. They're no longer just collateral damage. They're directly targeted. Um, they're recruited into armed forces. They're used as shields. Um, it, so that nature is changing a lot. Um, but by children telling the story in their way, um, we think that this is empowering. They've got control over what's being said about them. Um, we think that by asking them what they're thinking and to, to tell us their story, they're having their rights to, to speak to an opinion, to ask the government to protect them, their right to an education, all those sorts of rights are being met. But most importantly, that they're becoming advocates, they're understanding what it means to speak out. And as they develop, hopefully that will impact um, their futures and their communities. Now, that's the theory part. In practice, um, as I said earlier, stories are central to what we need to do. Um, we need to emote and to engage supporters. Um, I'm just going to take you through, I guess, um, I think five or six little snippets of our work, um, of our campaigning, and just sort of talk through them. This uh, is some of our recent social media posts. Um, you can see that, I mean, these are all children we work with. They're mostly Africa and Middle East there. Um, all the children in these pictures are looking at the camera. Um, we're trying to get a, a sense that these are resilient, that they are strong. We're also interacting with them. We're not showing um, vulnerable, crying, starving sort of children. We, we, these children are, have been through a lot and they deserve to be shown as strong people. Um, this was a fundraising campaign we ran, I think, about three or four years ago. Um, it's, the picture has been changed to protect her identity, but these are her actual words. This was her actual story. It was, hasn't been embellished at all. Um, and we think that's quite powerful. Obviously, as a fundraising campaign, we're trying to generate some support um, financially. Um, but again, you can see she, it, you can look at her and you can see she's obviously been through a lot, but she's looking at the camera. There's a strength or a determination there um, that we don't often see in other campaigns. Um, in terms of in-country advocacy, so what that means is Advocacy is core to a lot of our programs, so we're trying to change things in the countries also that we're working in. Um, so this video, let me get it up, which I'll show, um, has been made essentially by children. Um, we had some professional animators do the final touch, but those animators worked directly with the children to get the story um, for the words. The children had say over the look and the feel. Um, so they did some sketches of how they wanted this video to look. Um, and the story was the, a group of children sort of working together. And it was a story that they could all relate to, that this, this as a collective was their story. So I'll show the video. It goes for a couple of minutes. And then I'll tell you how we're using it. نام من خاطره، 14 ساله هستم. فامیل من در شهر هرات زندگی می کند و من بزرگتر از سه طفل هستم. والدین من محتاد می باشند و من همیشه مورد خشونت های زبانی و جسمی توسط آنها قرار می گیرم. پدرم من را مجبور به گدایی بر روی سرک می کند تا برای غذای شب پول به خانه بیاورم. یک روز من تصمیم گرفتم که بیشتر از این نمی توانم این کارها را انجام بدهم و از خانه فرار کردم. دو شب را بر روی سرک سپری نمودم و در شب سوم که در جستجوی یک سرپناه برای خودم بودم، یک راننده جوان از من خواست تا همراهش بروم. در مسیر راه توسط پلیس توقیف داده شدیم. آنها گفتند که ما به شما اجازه نمی دهیم تا با یک دیگر باشید به خاطری که هیچ رابطه ای با هم ندارید. 
آنها فهمیدند که من از خانه فرار کرده ام بنابراین آنها من را به مأموریت پلیس تحویل دادند و من برای مدتی در مرکز اصلاح و تربیت اطفال تحت عجز قرار داشتم نمیدانستم چه مدتی آنجا خواهم ماند چون والدین من من را به خانه نمیپذیرند و برایم گفتند که با این کارم آنها را شرمنده ساختم بنا چون 14 ساله بودم و فامیل من هم مرا قبول نمی کردن باید چند سال آنجا می بودم و از آینده خود هم نمی دانستم چه خواهد شد زمانی که من در مرکز تربیت و اصلاح اطفال بودم همراه یک خانم که از کارمندان اجتماعی دفتر وارچالد بریتانیا بود ملاقات نمودم و او برایم گفت که آنها می توانند برای من کمک کنند ولی باید مثبت فکر کنم و به آینده امیدوار باشم بنابراین او از من خواست که در آموزش های معارت زندگی و فعالیت های تفریح در مرکز مانند کارهای هنری، آموزش های هرفهی و سواد آموزی اشتراک نمایم. او خانم بسیار مهربان است. من می توانم به طور راحت نگرانی های خود را برای او بیان کنم. به من گفته بود که دفتر وارچال دارای یک خط تلفن کمک رسانی کودک می باشد. که بعد از رهایی اگر به مشکلی برخوردم می توانم به این شماره 0707 199 199 به تماس شوم و مشکلات محافظتی خود را بیان کنم و همچنان چندین کنفرانس قضیه فامیلی همراه فامیل من به خاطر قبولی دوباره من به خانه ترتیب دادند که من تغییرات چشمگیری در رفتار پدر و مادر خود نسبت به خود می بینم آنها بیشتر مرا درک خواهند کرد. در حال حاضر من با پدر و مادر خود زندگی می کنم. من هیجان زدم برای شروع کسب و کار خودم تا آنچه را که آموختم عملی نمایم. بنابراین فامیل من دوباره بر من افتخار خواهد کرد. So we use that film. Um, so as I said, that was completely created by children with the aid of some animators. Um, it's a child from our programs in Afghanistan who is actually speaking. Um, and we use the, that film, um, and there's a series of them, um, to show to child protection committees in communities, insurers in Afghanistan. Um, we show that there um, to hopefully raise awareness, but also to have children talking about their rights and other children in the community can sort of learn about their rights and there's that change that's happening there. Um, and we, we have children that say, oh, I saw this film, this is happening to me, can you help me? Um, so we find that that's quite powerful. Um, from a, 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 I guess at an international level, um, we still have those principles where it's really the children's voices, it's the children's stories that are being told. Um, and I want to show you this example um, of a current campaign that we're running. Um, it is, it's a little bit disturbing, but it's on all true stories. It's actual case studies that we've come across and we've pieced together this film from it. Um, the reality is we've had to tone this film back a bit because the reality was just too shocking. Um, and that's, that's the decision that we have to make at times. Um, there was a staff member who was recently out in the field and uh, her, a mother of a child said, can you take a picture of my child? She's here, she's crying, she's starving. Please take a picture of my child. I want the world to see it. Um, our, our policy, our beliefs, our values would say, no, we don't take that picture, we don't show that. Um, but at the same time, they're asking for that picture to be shown to the world. Um, so the, the staff member did take the picture um, because that's what was being asked and did capture the story. We've only shared that internally within our organisation because we don't think that that's helpful to that community, to that family, to show that wider. Um, to show a child crying. We don't, uh, that's our, that's where we draw the line. Um, so this video is drawn from some of those case studies, but also, as I say, it has been turned back, but it is still quite, um, 
a shocking film. Um, so much so that when we first showed it to staff at Warchild, there, there were tears in the room because it is quite a moving piece. So let me just get that up. Um, so yeah, that's quite a powerful movie, um, little film. It is, um, as I was saying, children's stories are central to what we're saying and we're always trying to have the voices of children um, in our campaigning and in our messaging. Um, so we, we have, as I showed the social media, we have the in-country sort of programs and we have this sort of more at a global level. We also have various young people um, who speak for us and on behalf of us and act as advisors in various capacities. We have a group of five young people, our youth engagement panel, who are advisors to War Child and they talk to us from a youth perspective. They are all children um, who have been affected by conflict in some way. They all have some sort of conflict background. Um, and so we ask them um, to, again, speak in as much or as little detail as possible um, with us and with MPs um, and at any other events that they're happy to talk at about their experiences and what they think um, that will mean for children. Or if we're doing a petition and they're talking to an MP about that petition and they're saying, well, we think you should make more of a commitment to children in conflict because this was my experience. Um, so that's a group of young people we have. We have um, Oscar, who again is a, he grew up in the Democratic Republic of Congo. He found War Child and just started fundraising for us. And then he was like, actually, I want to start telling people about my story. Um, and so that's been a journey that's evolved over time with us. And he recently spoke at, on stage at a Take That concert to an audience um, and just told them his story because that's what he wanted to do but we were able to provide that platform for him to do that. Um, and the last couple over there is um, Pauline um, who was, she's 
had an amazing, um, well, not an amazing, but a very interesting or different journey with Warchild. She was um, associated with the LRA, the Lord's Resistance Army in Uganda, and she escaped. She was a bushwife. She escaped, um, and she was a beneficiary of Warchild programs there for a while. And as she started to recover, she was like, well, actually, I want to tell my story to the world. And she came to the UK and she met um, with David Cameron and she told her story. Um, and as all this was going on, her, she had complete control of what was happening. Up, you can see up the top there on the far right, that's her picture, but she didn't want to be identified. So it's all very blurry. Um, at the, sexual, at the Summit to End Sexual Violence in, Com in Conflict last year, um, she's meeting with Angelina Jolie there, but she was happy to be identified by name and photographs shown of her. So we just work with them as they want to change how they're shown and represented. Um, and to conclude, um, I just thought I'd sort of think about what we're sort of saying the future of children are, is. Um, and I think for War Child, we're just helping children and young people um, to get their voices out, to get their stories out, because we value them as stakeholders and we think they have a very important part in the development of their communities and their countries. Thank you. <laughs>